Hi, this is Cece of Ellis Family Homestead, and I want to talk to you a little bit for a, about a, a few things. After I take my uh, do my exercise in the morning, of course, this morning it was that hike. I uh, I fix myself some breakfast, and that's when I usually watch some videos while I'm eating my breakfast. And this morning I was watching the Justin Rhodes video um, where he's talking about his struggle with the Lyme disease and how it affected his life, and and uh, and I have to admit I was really touched but in part not just because I could because he was suffering so much is because maybe it's because I understood what his suffering was <clears throat> and I think that's kind of the root of why I'm out here in this field trying to make a life out here because it all started with an illness of my, that I had contracted I mean we built the barn in 2007 or got the skin in the barn up and then we planted the vineyard in 2008, and then in 2008, I got, I started getting sick. I was very fatigued, had lots of joint pain, uh, fatigued to the point like we'd be planting a grapevine and a wave of fatigue would just engulf me, and right in the field, I'd just lay down and for five minutes or ten minutes or something until I could actually have the strength to stand back up and get back to work, you know, and that... That would happen several times a day, and then I got to where I was sleeping, like 18, 20 hours a day, and I was still tired, and I just hurt, and I was tired, and I went to the doctor, and that's when they told me that I had essentially some sort of autoimmune disease. I, I tested low positive for three different types of Lyme disease and low positive for rheumatoid arthritis, and because my joint pain was like an inflammation type thing, you could feel the heat in the joints, um, he put me on antibiotics for a year. What was kind of funny about that, the antibiotics really did help. I it, it was, I was getting my strength back. I was getting, you know, my energy back. And, you know, the, the joint pain was still there, but it wasn't as intense. It wasn't sharp, shooting, terrible pain that would just, just double you over. But because there was an inflammation in, in the joints, and we're talking about every joint in the body, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, knees fingers, toes, and stuff like that. Yeah, that too. And where your ribs connect to your sternum, I found out those are joints. It even hurt to breathe. And the same in the back, in your middle of your back and stuff too. So, you know, I just hurt. But uh, but the antibiotics helped really good. Um, and I know I sound like a broken record because I started feeling better. Everywhere I went, it's like, oh, it feels good to feel better. Oh, it feels good to feel better. Oh, it feels good to feel better. And I did for about a year. Then the pain and the fatigue came back again. And he tried to put me on antibiotics again, and it didn't work this time. So then he started putting me on anti-inflammatories. And the only thing that did, it didn't help with the pain, it didn't help with the inflammation, it didn't, it didn't help at all. But it did burn scar tissue in my esophagus, and then it got to where I was having trouble swallowing. You know how, like, when you swallow and it sticks, and you kind of have to do a wiggly dance to make it go down? Well, that's what I was doing, and I didn't think too much about it. You know, I was hoping, well, maybe this way I can lose some weight. Because, you know, I really couldn't eat as much. It's like, when I was full, I was full, that was it. And uh, I had mentioned it to my doctor in one of my visits, and he's going, oh, yeah, that's not good. And then they ended up going in there, going down my esophagus with like a balloon thing and stretching it out. And the uh, gastroenterologist at the time goes, you got to go next to him for the rest of your life. And... And I'm thinking, no, I'm not, because because I said I had GERD. Well, you know what? My esophagus got messed up because I was on anti-inflammatories, and, and and I'm not going on medication. I went off of the anti-inflammatory. It wasn't helping anyway. So then we started trying other medications. And then I ended up being allergic to some of them. Most of them just didn't help, and I was kind of getting to... The, what do I do? There were days that I couldn't even get out of bed. There was just so much pain and fatigue, and and you do you get so low. You you, I was I was afraid I was going to go on disability, and I didn't want to do that thing. And here I was, even hurting to breathe, and it was it was difficult. So so I'm asking my doctor. I said, what is wrong with me? He goes. I don't know, you have some sort of autoimmune disease. If you really want to go through the testing, we can narrow it down and find out what kind of autoimmune disease you have. But I don't know what it is. And, I, and I'm going, no, 
I'm, I'm going to go home and think about it for a while. So I started asking myself, what is autoimmune? So I started doing, you know, just a little bit of research. You know, you just pull up Google and look, study things and, look, and read things just enough to satisfy your curiosity and then draw your conclusions for that good or bad. You know, is there enough information? I don't know. It doesn't matter, but that's what I did. And I, but I discovered that autoimmune basically means my body's attacking itself. And I'm thinking, why the heck would my body attack itself? I, but what am I doing to be allergic to myself? How do you be allergic to yourself? Why would it attack yourself? It's not, that's not the way God made our bodies to attack itself. What, if, what am I doing to my body that makes it want to attack itself? And then the only thing I can narrow it down to is what I eat. I mean, because you do think about, is it what I eat? Is it what I'm drinking? Is it, is it my environment? And... I live in rural Oklahoma. There's not a lot of, of chemicals or anything out here, so I don't think it was my environment. And but then, then I thought, okay, it, maybe it is a food. So I started going down the rabbit hole of finding out what's in our food. And the more I learned about our food, the more oh, I was, I'm thinking, no wonder I'm sick. Is is everybody in the world sick, or at least in the United States, when they find out? I mean, because when you talk, when you start talking about the antibiotics, and then they even put a little bit of arsenic in chicken. Okay, so you're eating chicken breast to lose weight because you're really trying to lose weight. They putting arsenic in chicken to help it retain water, so it plumps up faster and gets to weight faster. And then you're supposed to be eating this chicken to lose weight, and you're not losing weight because guess what? You're retaining water too. Oh, the more I read, the more just incensed I got. Poor, my poor husband. Sometimes he would come home. One time when I read about the arsenic thing, he came home about two minutes later and I just went, Do you see this? What are they doing to our food? And then I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do about it? Then I started going, trying to go to Whole Foods and all that other stuff. Well, this is when Tom's depression started, you know, somewhere through there. And our income was going backward and down and down and down. So now both of us are sick from one thing or another, you know. And there's no, run, there's no money for Whole Foods. So... I decided, you know what, I've got to learn how to grow my own food. And I have not done a real great job of growing it. I've got a lot to learn, and you're, that's why we're taking this journey out here, too. But because I be, have become more aware, you know, if I can't pronounce it, and I can pronounce a lot of words, if I can't pronounce it, if I, can't, if I don't know what it is, if I don't know what it's doing, I didn't want it in my body anymore. So I've learned, I'm, I mean, I can my own chicken broth. I'm raising my own chickens. I, you know, regardless, I'm eating much cleaner. Tom's eating much cleaner. And when Kenzie's out here, she eats cleaner too. You know what? I started feeling better. And I am not on medications for pain. In general, I am not on anti-inflammatories. I almost never take ibuprofen or Tylenol or any of that other stuff. I just, I just don't need it. And it doesn't help anyway. So, like, honestly, when you have a bad day with the pain, those those uh, pain relievers don't touch it. So you suffer through the day. Get over it, you know. And so I do still have bad days. And then when Justin Rhodes was talking about <clears throat> that he couldn't run anymore, and I really, I'm sorry I'm struggling with this because I understand, you know. But as I got to feeling better, I started jogging. And I even told him in the comments two and a half years ago, or a year and a half ago at springtime, I ran, my, I ran a 5K. I was able to work up. It took me 40 minutes. I was slow as all get out. I'm 55 years old, but I ran a 5K. I was able to take my health into my hands and watch how I eat and take care of myself. To the best of my ability, I'm, I'm not perfect by any means. You see what I cook, and, and I'm trying to learn. I'm doing better, and I've got a long way to go, you know. All right, when I was filming this the other day, I, I, it kind of ended up in a rant against food and what the government thinks it's safe and our food and pharmaceuticals and all the other fun stuff that, that goes with that. When I essentially wanted to say that I, I understand to the best of my ability what Justin Rose is, is going through and, his, and the struggle he's going through because I've gone through a similar struggle too. And the only reason that I decided to put this video out in the first place is not only to, to indicate that I do understand the struggle, but to, to show that in a lot of ways I've triumphed 
myself over the struggle. I have, I feel better. I, I still have bad days, but I feel better. I, I ran a 5K slowly, but I ran it, made it. Didn't even feel bad afterward. So there, there is victory. If you don't learn to take care of yourself, take, uh, eat properly, do what you need to do, and and listen to your body, then you can feel better. So hang in there, guys. We can all start feeling better.